Good evening, welcome Guten Tag. Uh, another, I guess, working session here. Uh, tonight I'm going to keep working on mortises for my parents' TV, kitchen TV stand thing. Uh, I'm going to try, I'm going to try a little bit different technique this evening. I forgot my knife. I usually cut these in half for a little shop dog Scarlet. Because she's an itty bitty thing. You want to say hi, Scarlet? You want to say hi? Say hi. So rough being here with Dad. So rough. Uh, she's itty bitty, so she can't. One, she doesn't need one of these tired things in one sitting. And two, well, she would have no problem chewing through this. She is. Uh, she's a hardcore chewer. Here you go. Here you go. I actually, I bought what was supposed to be uh, a toy for tough chewers. Uh, and it lasted all of all of about 30 seconds until she had the stuffing out of it. Um, you know, the Tuffy, Tuffy brand, those are, those are the ones that if you have a dog that is a pretty ferocious chewer and she chews, she chews way out of her weight class, that is for sure. Um, we had a, we had a ring, a little frisbee type thing that um, she's had it for about six months and still has yet to chew through it. So, all right. So what I'm doing here, I'm trying to see, way out here, I'm trying to see the width. Cause tonight I'm going to try, I'm going to drill out a mortise, uh, rather than chopping it out. I want to, I want to try that. I haven't done it too many times, so I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm good at it. So it's a sixteenth bigger than a half inch. I want to try to avoid having to sit here and uh, have to sit here and plane all those down. Did I not? I didn't, did I? Alright, I got the bottoms worked on these. All right, so I got the bottoms in, in there. I can't, I don't know how well you can see it, but they're about an eighth, eighth of an inch difference in length. So square up the bottoms, make sure that they're flat and level and true. And you probably can see this as well. They're not the same width, which is just kind of the way it works sometimes. Um, put it in the old vise here. Because what I want to do, all this other stuff, it doesn't really matter that much. I can work around that, no problem. I can work around the difference in lengths, difference in widths and all those kind of things. And still get everything square. I'm just going to have to know where to target. All right, so these are going to be the backs. These will face each other. That's what's going to happen now. Oops. So, this is what we made last time. Let's do this. Undone. Undone.
Snug them up. Snuggy, 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 one of them is not like the others. So, what we will do, no, 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 no. Okay, so these two legs here, they're gonna be in the back, so you're not gonna see them. And usually I sit here and say, I'm like, oh, then I'm not too worried about them, but what I do want, some gorgeous quarter sawn on them. And I want to make sure that that is visible. Okay. This side is a little less impressive on the, on the uh, gray flanking. And this side is. So these two sides will fade. Ooh, look at that. They're even. transfer there is where my knife so so ooh. in terms of marking right you can do pencil and some people get crazy overboard on pencils and thicknesses and all that uh, I take a version well I guess I, I, I Paul Sellers if you look him up on YouTube tons of videos Guy's been woodworking longer than I've been alive. Uh, and he has what's called the knife wall technique, which, of course, my knife is not here. So I have to improvise. Anyway, he takes a razor blade, and I do the same thing, just a, it's a pack of 50 Stanley razor blades. And then I have, I'll have to show it off one of these days. I have, um, it's just kind of your regular disposable razor blades, and then it's a fixed blade utility knife. I tried a retractable blade one, but the blade kept shifting on me. So what I'm doing is I'm marking the top and bottom of what's going to be my mortise hole. And now that is the same on all of these. So that means, and with the bottom lined up, that means that that is all the same. And then I'll continue to register everything from the bottom of these up. So that way any extra length or anything I have is on the top and that's gonna get, that's gonna get adjusted to the bottom. So there is that. Uh, let's see here. These two are going to face each other. Let's see the mark. And the triangle, I did a triangle where in theory one point's on this board, one point's on this board, and the other point should be in the middle. It doesn't work out that way, but at the same time, if I ever question or wonder, One, I didn't put a triangle on the other two. It's kind of a dead giveaway. But when you do that, then they should always they should always line up. And then whatever whatever bit you're off on any of these, because um, I mean obviously you're not going to make a triangle the same every single time. But the differences will line up when they're on two jointed pieces. There we go. Now. Alright, so this is the inside face and I just put an arrow. Tell me what's what's what. Cause there, oh no, I guess that would be back, wouldn't it? So I'm gonna go like that. 
that, and that one will go like that. Now we have a difference. Which is fine. That difference will stick out the back. If you look closely enough and carefully enough, you'll see it. Uh, and that's and that's fine. It'll stick out the back that way. They're the same thickness here and they're the same thickness as the other ones. So everything will line up and any differences will be will be overhang with this. So that means these two need so that it'll be a mortise over here somewhere. However I decide to do that. Okay, so we have that, we know that that is on the inside, so we know we need to be right, yeah, so we need this because it'll fold in like that. So bang bang bang, we're gonna be right about there and right about Hold on, hold on. To what pizza does it make a difference if we make it or not? Got each other, that's all right for love. We'll give it a shot. Oh, oh. oh man. Music career almost worked out. Almost. So there. Now I've got them laid out uh, so far. Uh, let's see here, that is the marking for the inside. Let's just run that line all the way down. All the way down, all the way, all the way, all the way. And we'll run it all the way here. And I think that's where I screwed up the first time. So the other ones, there's one of the boards where I don't have quite Scarlet's getting some wood. You gotta get, get it. Uh, anyway, that's where I screwed up the last one is I didn't mirror it. Uh, I marked from this side and I marked from this side, which isn't right when you do an offset tenon. So there's that. Uh, let us reset. Reset for one quarter of an inch, right? Perhaps. Perhaps. Do, 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 do. Oh no, goodness gracious. Um, that's my four by. Did I mark that right? Yep. That's as right as it's gonna be. There we go. And that yields. Okay. So what I was saying with like half inch and three quarters and all that kind of stuff. So now I need to find so I got my two lines on here. And let's mark them. It's also helpful for you to see. Oh boy, all of the grain there. There's that, and then we got the other one going like that, and we got like that, and then this is all gonna go by. So you can see we got there, 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 and that's gonna go by. And then that's just my marking saying that's the inside edge. Um, got the same. Oops. Don't have the same over here. There we go. Knock it all the way. 
Now we have the same over here where we have a line there, we got a line there, one about there, and one about there. See? And then all of that right there is going to go away. All right. Now, before I said it was. All right, so we're a half inch in, and we're drilling out roughly a half inch mortise. That means I need to go three quarters of an inch in. Sure, we'll measure three quarters and a 30 second past. This is probably the only time I'll ever worry about 30 seconds of an inch. This works, and I can figure it out. Maybe I just force myself to figure it out on this one. I've never, I've, I haven't had good luck in the past. It's always taken longer. Uh, taken longer to drill than it would just to uh, use a chisel and chisel it up. and braces, a sixteenth bigger than a half inch would be a nine, that's a ten, that's one thing I like about these, I wish, I wish they weren't so, such big sticklers for reducing fractions, then fractions would make a heck of a lot more sense, well, at least in woodworking when you're dealing with inches, because then instead of, you know, trying to say, okay, what's a half plus three quarter um, it would just be, it would be what's 8 plus 12? 20. 20 sixteenths is 1 and 4 sixteenths. Bing, bang, boom. Oh, let's see here. And this is uh, Irwin at, at Lowe's. They have, uh, it was a three pack. It's quarter, half, and three quarter of kind of modern bits. Uh, I don't even, screw bits. I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what to call these. Uh, but they work well enough in the old braces. He's got a good shot on that. Eh, not the best. Not the best. Uh, but you know what? I think that's that'll do. That'll do. So uh, let's go in our center line. Now the center line isn't the actual center line of my markings here. It'll be off by that 30 second of an inch I was telling you about. But that's fine because I want, since this is, this is a measurement that has to remain critical to where that has to be a half inch from the edge so that way everything lines up. And I say critical like, I know what I'm talking about. All right, going in, oh, I absolutely love, love, love boring holes out like this. I mean, it's boring to watch, but God, I couldn't resist making that joke, could I? All right, now. So you do that. Looks like about an inch. You can put tape on here. Um, and I, if I can make this work, it'll be worth it. Oh, what do I got here? Oh, that's a bunch of eight. So this is a depth stop for yonder, for yield. Yeah. 
steel drill bits. Can I go this way? There we go. That worked pretty slick. Okay, I think that worked well. Now what I can do, and since I know that some of my tenons are actually bigger than an inch, because I need to go down an inch for sure. Oh, uh, gee. As you can probably tell, I don't have a ton of experience with this. Just never needed to drill that many holes of a precise depth. And I wanted it, because there's times to where I wanted a precise depth. And I knew this was easy, and the times I've used it, it's, it's amazing. Is that an inch and an eighth? That'll work perfect. How did I get so lucky? Right on the first try. Right on the first try. Alright, so snug that up. Get that back in there. Now. That is right on the line. Perfection. Perfection. And it's just a hair bit over on the other side, which is what I would expect. Now, watch. Don't work with me while I'm on video. Okay, I'm at depth. What's nice? Alright, made it kind of ugly, but all, most of that should be within the. within the. Uh, hidden by the tenon. Uh, I can hear you guys bitching and complaining. Well, craftsmanship is, you know, it's what you don't see. It's like integrity. It's what you do when no one's watching. Yeah. I also gotta get shit done here. And this would be a hell of a lot faster with a hollow mortis, a hollow chisel mortis or whatever the hell. But I ain't got one of those. I got an old timey bit and brace. Okay. Oh boy. I should plan that out a little bit better. I think that'll work. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Alright. Now. Probably so I can screw that up a bit. Oh yeah. Goodness gracious. One thing you have to be careful with these is this lead screw here. You want to make sure if you're looking for these that the lead screw is in good shape. If it's not, the, the entire bit is junk because um, it's not gonna, it, it's not going to go through the wood. That lead screw it pulls the bit through the wood. So you oh Jesus, really? I'm only an inch and three quarters. Thick. There's a, when I'm questioning, there's a hole on this side. Oh, yeah, that was that first one. That was before I put the depth stop on it. It went all the way through. Yeah, isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? All right. Now, question time. Is it worth a damn? I feel like that was a lot faster. I feel like it was. And my clock is stopped. Batteries must be dead in it. Although it is Sunday night, I wish the clock would stop. I could use a few hours to work on this stuff. Oh, uh, let's see here. Let's get out the bruiser. 
Let's get out the bruiser. There we go. Ooh. One thing that depth stop did was smudged up my smudged up my uh, marking line. I probably could have done this part without it being locked down. Uh, but the trick I showed you guys last time, I can do that. Where did I put that screwdriver? That's on tool well, of course. So Lord knows your tool well gets used only for tools. All right. Oh God, yeah, that first one is way too big. Living on a prayer stuck in my head. Watch. This video gets flagged by YouTube for copyright infringement. Because I got a song stuck in my head. I forget what I said that. Popped it in there in the first place. I think it was, we'll make it. We'll make it, I swear. Living on a prayer. Because why not? Huh. You know what? This one's going well. Yeah, I wonder. So I've I've only ever tried it in pine before. And one thing I will say is this white oak uh, mortises are a hell of a lot easier in it than, than in pine. Why? Actually, I got into a conversation. There was a, oh, I was at a Habitat for Humanity thing, and I was talking to a kid, and he was just getting he was just getting started in, in woodworking. I'm like, oh, neat, awesome. And he was talking about all the woods that he they see come through there and all that kind of stuff, and how he loves you know oak and walnut and and all those all those ones that you would expect. And he asked me. I guess I've never really given it too much of a thought. He asked me what my favorite wood was. My favorite wood to work. And I thought about it for a second. I mean, I did some deep pondering in that second. Um, and I told him that it was pine. Just a regular construction grade pine. And to see like the disappointment come across his face, I'll tell you what, it was it was like I told him that his his puppy and his kitty and his favorite teacher all didn't like him. But for me, it's it's very real because it's it it is an incredibly difficult wood to work and make look decent. because it likes to chip out and it's so soft that like when you try to clean up a mortise like this, it is a pain in the ass. All right, we are, we're just gonna pick something here and go with it. All right, are we in there? No, how about this side? Okay, this side works. Now. All right, tried that. Let's go over here. Let's go beyond. And if you guys can't see this, I'm sorry. I'm just taking my rabbit plane. And really, I mean, a tenon is, is basically nothing but a, an end grain rabbit, uh, if you think about it. I mean, you can sit here and you can try to tell me all that. Oh, it's, it's not that because a rabbit is, is the, you know, here's the definition and yada, yada, yada. But I tell you what, they're really, 
There really aren't that many things that you have to master in woodworking. Problem is, mastering them is a pain in the ass. Like here. I mean, on a table saw, yeah, you make your little, your little mortising jig and your tenoning jig. You run it through there and you can churn out a hundred identical tenons. With hand tools, you gotta sit here and you gotta fit and you gotta fuss and you gotta do all sorts of other things. And you gotta know how to use a chisel. Um, in case you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of Paul Sellers. That right there is an oldie chisel. Interestingly enough, the week that I saw him talk about that on his video, or I watched the video of whatever, uh, there, I went right on the line. Uh, the Aldi I go to had them in stock and I haven't seen them since. So I'm really glad I picked them up then. They are, um, it seems, at least the wood handled ones. When I first got them, put an edge on them, the edge bent over in no time flat. So I kept them for, for light pairing work. And I had to sharpen them a couple more times, and I'm taking way too much wood off here. Way too much wood. Um, and now, I don't know if they just had some really... Oh, shit, which one's which? No. Let's just try it. There we go. Oh, that is good. That is good. Look at this. Look at this. I mean, it could be tit tit more snug, but I think once I, once I actually uh, clamp it up, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try draw bores in here. Um, I'm gonna try to draw bore it. But I think that's good. That, that one's good. That took, that took a lot less time. Cow. At least it feels like it. There's that hole on the other side. I mean, once once you get it, I'm not gonna stain it. I was gonna say stain it. I'm not gonna stain it. I'm just gonna um, plane it up, plane it smooth, and then um, that grain is really messing with me. So the grain is all this way, which to me makes it look like it's wider down here than it is up here, which it should be. I don't think it is. Um, mm, there you can see the the one that is this deeper than the rest. That's the one that poked through. No, those so those Aldi chisels. Uh, after I sharpened them a few times, after this last time, they've they've held the edge pretty well. I mean, for a ten dollar set of four chisels, I mean, yeah, they're in metric, but they are pretty good. All right, what did I? Oh shit. Forgot to mark it. Oh, not that side. This side, there we go. Nice and good. So this is the back bottom. So this poor piece of wood will never ever be seen, really. There we go. Now, on this one over here, a, B, so we'll do C and D, C and D, so this will be C, and we'll put the C back here, and I'll put the C right here, line them up, line them up, um, I 
No, they just, they've done really, really well. Uh, I still use a mostly four pairing. Simply because that's kind of what I need. What do I do with the other one? The other one's over here. Alright, it's already got the center line and everything. You know that that's the middle. And we know that we need to uh, do this side, do this side, and then bow. -bow. All right, let's do this again. Let's see if we can get two on in the video. You guys can see how awesome I am. And I can get two mortises done in one video. There we go. Oh dear. Oh, oh, oh my. So I am, I am off by a little bit here. See what's nice about this, so usually on these when you try to drill to depth, you then have to go, you have to, you have to unscrew it out of there, which means all the wood chips you keep, you push them back down into there, whereas with this, it breaks the breaks the wood in there, so then that way you can just you can keep drilling everything out. All right. Man, I don't like that. Why are you the way you are? Why are you? With a little bit of luck, that'll be the only spot I. Alright. Oh, dang it. No, I went too far the other way. I tried correcting the door. Oh, dear. This one is going to be. This one's hacked up. This one's hacked up. I tell you what. I gone done screwed the pooch here. Screwed the pooch. much I got I got overconfident that's what it was I got overconfident after that first one now we well I got three of them kind of in a row so hopefully it's not gonna be twisted And of course it's effed up to the wrong way, which actually that's okay. Cause, okay, so we're gonna have a stretcher going here and then we're gonna have a board on top. You will never see that. You won't ever see that. It's not a great excuse, but you know what? For something that's not gonna affect the structural integrity. Actually, I heard once, Mark, I'm a true craftsman. Isn't that you don't make any mistakes? It's that you know how to fix them, cover them up, or explain them. And by golly, we are going to. Too far that way. Too far that way. I 
corrected, and then it didn't correct enough, and then I had to live with it. That's right, okay, no, so those will stay like that. And I bet I can shoot it off. You know what? This one's gonna fit like a green the first time. That's what's gonna happen. See, that's, that's what I was going for. I was just trying to create a better fit. using a screwdriver to clean out your mortise is you're not messing with, which I mean it really, it's like you have some people who uh, will sit there and tell you, you know, don't run your plane over a glue line, you know, you always want to chisel it out first or sand it down or scrape it down or do whatever because you don't want to run your plane over it. All it's going to do is just dull your plane maybe a little bit faster. And in reality, that's all that's really going to happen. Digging wood chips out of the bottom of the mortise with your chisel. It's going to dull a little bit faster. And I'm of the mindset chisels and planes and all that kind of stuff is they don't need to be anywhere near as sharp as what you're led to believe. You just need to take thinner shavings. And I, maybe some of that is uh, people, I mean, very few people have probably more than two planes, let alone, you know, like a stable of planes. Because, I mean, I have like a, I have a dedicated scrub. I have Call it jack plane. Oh, it'd be a four plane. Not a jack plane, a four plane. Um, that is that is ugly. You know what? That's part of the reason why we're doing this. Um. So yeah, I have a scrub plane, and then you'd hit it with a four plane, and then you'd hit it with a jack plane, and then you would hit it with your smoother, your number four smoother. I, get, I should say most of the time I buy pre-surfaced wood most of the time so I don't have to go through a lot of those stages and on this project actually it's gonna be one of the first times really having to do that because I got some actual rough sawn lumber uh, so C so down so this goes in here like this so in case I lost you on that quick little bit there so I got my C here, so I know that's facing down, and it has to be away from here. So bloop, that means that the D goes right there. And I'm off by just a real little bit right there. It's right in there. Um, you know, I need to do. Not uh, now, I might step up to a 10. If I gotta do a little bit of work to trim them down, that's better than the number two loose. Because you don't want your tenons too loose. That's like throwing a hot dog down a hallway and no one likes that. Oh dear, let's get before I do anything else.
pretty darn good shape. Maybe a little bit of twist, but that'll be all right. Perfect. Perfect. All right. Mark this up. We got a lot of play in the slot there, but that's because this one is actually a little bit a little bit smaller than this. That's right. And there you go. Two mortises done. I think it's probably about the same amount of time I did one the other day. Well, I have a new method. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right. Thanks for watching if you made it this far.